Welcome to our Support Vector Regression course. Today, we are going to continue our machine learning project about home appliances energy consumption. In this lesson, we are going to deal with outliers. Dealing with outliers is actually a very important part of any machine learning or even a deep learning project because it can make or break your prediction results. In most cases, we may not be able to identify and understand the value that outliers can give to our project. And the question always lies on how are we going to detect them? How are we going to interpret them? And how are we going to treat them for us to decide whether or not to retain them? But I want to tell you guys, not in all cases we are going to just disregard outliers. In fact, in some cases, we have to decide what percentage of these outliers we're going to retain and what percentage of these outliers we're going to reject. And with this, the most important thing is you have to really understand that you need a person who is an expert in the subject matter because these persons are going to tell you whether or not these outliers are normal with respect to human experiences as far as a certain subject matter is concerned. So this is why we can never take away domain expertise of a person who is experienced in the subject matter at hand. As a data scientist, you always need to have a discussion with key persons involved in the project. And this is for this reason that in making a data science project, a team must always be considered. And this team must be composed of First, a data scientist. Second, an IT expert. The third one, an executive. The fourth one is a domain expert and any other persons who we think are capable in making the machine learning project or data science project successful. So before we continue, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down there because we do have a lot of exciting and free data science lessons for all of you. We do have machine learning essentials, the deep learning mathematics, the different data science algorithms, the different data science tips that can help you become a successful data scientist. If you want to be notified every time we have a new session or a new lesson, please don't forget to click the notification icon and click all. And also, don't forget to share this video with your friends. So let's get right into our job. So this time, we're going to start with our feature engineering. And this feature engineering is actually a very important part of our project because here we would be able to understand the different characteristics and natures of these features that we have so far and how are we going to process them and evaluate them in such a way that they can be of prime importance in our predictive modeling. So we will first write here feature engineering so we can be guided of the different steps that we are undertaking. And then let's set this one into cell number one, to heading one, I mean, and let's add more cells. Our focus here is appliances and it's always very much fitting to understand the nature of these appliances. And with that, we first have to understand the different values that our appliances have. So we're going to identify the highest values of the appliances. And for us to do that, we're going to sort these values and then we're going to arrange these values in ascending order. So we are going to have, sorry, we're going to have sorted appliances. Okay, so this is the kind of code that we're going to use. So here we use the sort of values function. So we could sort the values of our appliances in ascending order. It is okay, false. So I have to correct myself. It is supposed to be in descending order so that we could see first the highest value on top, not the ascending order, which I have mentioned. So I got a mistake in there. So let's execute this one. Now we could see that our highest value is 1080. So we want to see more of the values below 890 and let's just get the 25 values. 
right now we have the 25 values the first highest 25 values so we, we could see that there are a lot of 780 then we have 790 and then we have 1070 and we also have 1070 okay now seeing these values can really help us identify whether or not there are outliers whether or not there are abnormal values we can see in our data set and as what i've said with respect to identifying these abnormal entries or values in our data set it's always very important to ask the opinion of an expert for this matter so with respect to this situation according to an expert evaluation it is said that the recording of above 800 watts can be very illogical thinking the fact that it's only a home appliance so based on his experience this kind of situation can be resulted to when there is some kind of fault in the device that records this consumption so later on we will be able to identify what these values that are considered outliers at this very moment it's always very important to make a decision because we have already seen these values which are illogical and so our decision is that we're going to reject the one percent of these values which are considered outliers based on our discussion so for us to do that we're going to have this one here we will identify how many is the one percent let's execute this okay so we could see that there are 19 values which we said is the one percent that we have considered to be rejected out of the many outliers so let's go back to this one first so for sure this value this value this value and this value and this value of course are to be rejected and so for us to identify what's the value of the 19th row we're going to have this one we're going to sort it so we will have the appliances sorry uh, that okay now let's have 19 and this will give us the value of the 19th row which we have considered to be the boundary of the one percent to be considered outliers so let's have this one okay so that means the value 790 and above will be considered an outlier saying that we only have these values like 790 and above that are considered to be outliers may not give us the proper understanding of what these values are really outliers per se so it's always very important to have a visualization of the composition of these outliers and for us to do that it's always very interesting to use the box plot and for that we will use this one so here we are actually finding the outliers and that's what we've done just a while ago so we first identify what these values of our appliances and we have arranged that in descending order so we have this and of course we will write the number of the one percent top values of appliances and of course a zero because zero can be considered illogical thinking the fact that there is consumption and then we will write here the number of the one percent top values of appliances load is and this will give us the value of our outliers and so we also set this one in a box plot so we could really see in picture the behavior of these values so we are set to go and let's execute this one actually based on this box plot the values that are within the minimum and the maximum values are here so it's from a little bit above zero and here or possibly 180 these values are the values which are not really outliers however considering all of these values above this maximum we can say that there can be 
a lot of values that can be stricken from our data so now the question is this are we going to delete all of these values or we're going to just retain some of them and reject some of them of course we can never or reject most of these values it's because they can really affect the capability of our prediction if we are going to delete or reject all of these outliers then the capability of our predictive power is very much weak it's because it can never perform very much well when it is applied in a real scenario and what I mean here is during the deployment part of our model, it's because it is not trained to cater values from this point going to this point, which is, I believe a lot of people, a lot of homes will be consuming this kilowatt hour. So that is why from the very first part of our project, we have decided to reject only the 1% of these values, these top values, which based on our experience may be considered illogical. So the next question is this, what are we going to do then? Because we have already identified these outliers. Of course, there is only one way to deal with that kind of situation, and that is to delete these 1%. And for us to do that, we're going to have this. So here, we're going to use the drop now function and we're going to delete or drop these values which are higher than 790 so we are now going to execute it let's see the result then okay so we have now deleted or dropped these values which are higher than 790 and let's see if they are already dropped so let's just copy this one and then let's paste this in there okay and then let's see what the result would be if these values which are higher than 790 are already dropped so we have retained the 790 and those values which are higher than 790 are deleted so as we have said only the one percent of the values are to be considered outliers and we have identified 790 just by first understanding the 1% or identifying the 1% and we have identified that the value of the 1% is 19 and with that we sorted which value is on the 19th row and then after that we have identified that those values which are higher than 790 will be considered as outliers so in this part of our machine learning project we have dealt with feature engineering in this feature engineering we have actually done some of the very important things to do in making data science projects so first of all we identified the values and after identifying these values we have also decided as to the percentage of our outliers and with that we have dropped the outliers so these are actually some of the very important part of the feature engineering that we have to take note of so actually we are just in the first part of our feature engineering and more of these we are going to talk about and discuss in our future lessons because we will still have to decide what features what values we're going to use for our prediction do you want to know more about this channel just don't forget to click these cards you can enjoy our free data science courses like machine learning algorithm essentials deep learning mathematics the different data science algorithms the different data science tips and a lot more courses that you can share with your friends here you can always learn and enjoy for free